Hey out there Akronites, welcome once again to Around Akron with Blue Green. And wow, this is gonna be a fun episode you're gonna wanna stick around for. I'm up here in North Hill today and I'm visiting the No High Cafe because I'm gonna be visiting a few places right around the corner in this area. I'm gonna visit an apothecary and learn all about those amazing herbs and what they can do for you. I'm gonna catch up with Nacho Daddy's Hot Sauce and learn all about their amazing hot sauce. I'm gonna head over to the west side of Akron and visit the 1474 Art Gallery. And I'm gonna visit a boutique up here in North Hill that has all kinds of amazing local goods. Now to kick this show off today, I'm gonna head right next door to the Hideaway Studio and Herbal Gift Shop. Let's go see what they're all about. My herbal experience started with cooking. I didn't know I was using herbs. I just thought they were seasonings until I got more acquainted with the definition of herbs and learned that pretty much everything, your seasonings, your spices, are all under the herbal category. I've been into herbs for, since my late teens, early 20s. There were times where I did not have insurance, so I had to try to kind of figure out on my own ways to keep myself well, ways to address different things that might pop up, respiratory things. Um, so I got into herbs as a way of providing myself with the, with the way of healing myself. An apothecary, way back when, was where you would get your herbal tonics for healing which is now our modern day pharmacy. There are now places you can go to con that continues the, the herbal side of the uh, apothecary. You get tonics, tinctures, herbal extractions, and education on herbs at an apothecary. So that's where it all started before we had pharmacies. I think what a lot of people will find if they kind of dig into research is that a lot of medicines, they come from herb derivatives, things that are already in nature doing what they want medicine to do, but they kind of tweak it. And so I am not a medical professional or that type of medical professional, but throughout history, people have been finding ways of healing themselves within nature. So this is older than Western medicine. So people take them as teas. Uh, people can take them and use them as a tea bath uh, for like relaxation. Uh, you can ingest a mullein uh, to deal with respiratory issues. Uh, you can inhale herbs steaming by steaming in that way. You can infuse herbs and oils and use them topically, but you need to do your research on what it is you're actually um, putting on your body or in your body. So I'm an advocate of everyone doing their own research and then coming into the shop and knowing kind of what they want, but we also have someone here who's, you know, learning um, herbs and how to support people as they are venturing on their adventure with learning. The, the herb shop kind of was an afterthought to me trying to create a creative space. I have a very strong creative streak and I needed an outlet for that. And I wanted to create a space where other people could also come and be creative. And so we have different fabrics and we have different things and we will have workshops. We hosted some quilt making workshops. So the creative space came first and then I was like, well, how are we gonna keep the space open? <laughs> and so that's when I was wanted to bring in herbs because to me, it's all holistic. It's all a part of developing well-being. Creativity is a big part of that. Being able to help and heal yourself is a big part of that. And so that's why this space has come into being. Having a space where you can feel safe, first and foremost, no judgment zone, an open, welcoming 
environment to put your guard down and just be yourself. We, this is definitely the type of place that provides that for any and everyone. Even if you're not into or don't understand herbs, candles, crystals, this is still a place that you can come in to learn, ask questions without feeling any apprehension. Just come in, talk about whatever's on your mind, be you in this creative space. Share your stories, your experiences, or sit and be quiet. With is here, it's all here. You have access to three businesses that are all connected to to provide a communal hub in Temple Square. This is what this location is called, this little strip here, it's Temple Square, and to build community and commerce in this, this area. So it's good that we are a collective in this neighborhood to provide a space for others to be themselves in any dynamic as far as coffee drinkers, crafters, artists, musicians, you name it. This, this pretty much covers it. everyone, everyone pretty much. I'm here all the time and I'm glad it's created. Next up, I'm gonna head over to the west side of Akron to visit the 1474 Art Gallery. Now this is a new place and they're doing things way different than I've ever seen. Let's go see what the 1474 Art Gallery is all about. I had a friend, he was an artist in high school. He was just very creative. Um, he drew me something really quick in high school and then I had it at lunch and somebody was like, oh, like, what is that? Oh my God. And I'm like, oh yeah, so-and-so drew it for me. And then they was like, let me have it. And I wanted to buy pizza that day or something. And I was like, 20 bucks. And I got 20 bucks from the, <laughs> from the painting I had. And I was like, mm, might be on to something. So life went on and it kind of like happened. And I was like, well, my, and by the way, my background is in marketing. So I was like, I don't think I know how to paint because I never got into it. I didn't take art class or anything. And I was like, well, I just love the art world. So what can I do to like be a part of it? And my friend was like, yo, help me sell these paintings. Hello, like this is what you do. And da da da. So we made it a thing. And he was just my friend and we just kind of always did it. And then he would say, I have another artist who needs your help with some this, this, that, and third. And I picked up on that and I realized that what I was doing was a need. And I started realizing that people need me, so I should speak up about what I do. I was at the bar next door, <laughs> South Point Tavern, shout out to you guys. And um, I seen that this space was vacant and I, I never wanted a gallery. I travel a lot. A lot of the artists that I meet aren't, um, were actually, from different states and like love Akron, Ohio or grew up in Akron, Ohio and now live in Atlanta and it's just funky, they're all over the place. So I was like, well, why get a gallery? I have an online art gallery as well since 2018. So I was like, there's no point in just having a gallery. People don't go to galleries anymore. They could just go to social media. Something just told me I had a gut feeling that I should try it, look out the place. And I literally did it for fun. Like, let's see what this place looks like. It was a, a pet shop or a place where they like washed animals and stuff. And, and I came in and I was like, well, this is too big. I don't need it. <laughs> like 1200 square feet, no, thank you. And then I, I couldn't get the venue out my head. I was like, well, maybe if we knock this down and do that. And I love the storefront. I love this area. and. They call me back and they go, well, hey, uh, we love your idea, your proposal. Like, we want to give it to you. How about we work something out? And at that point, I knew I had it. I had to do it. And it was just, it wouldn't get off of me. So I, I ran with it. And here we are. So my grand opening was September 5th. It was the Labor Day weekend. So I've only been here for a couple months. So 1474, 2014 was the year I decided 
uh, to, to push for. I came up with the idea. I was at home with a couple of my friends and we would always do like business planning and uh, vision boards and so forth. And so for some reason, I always write the date down. Before you start writing anything, the first thing you do is put the date down. You don't know what you're gonna write, but the date is first. So it just stood out to me, uh, 14, and I'm really big on numbers and um, energy and things like that. I knew 14, but 14 just wasn't enough. <laughs> 74 was the year my brother was born. He passed away in a car accident. And he was a very artistic person as well. Very um, smooth, very energetic, a happy, loving individual. And I said, well, what can I do to keep his memory going? 14, the year I decided to start my business and 74 was my brother's birthday and I put them together and it just, it never went out my head from there. I wanted to keep his memory alive by doing so. And 14 is always to just remember, like you had this vision in 14, keep going. It doesn't matter when you start it, as long as you don't stop, you'll get to where you need to go. My favorite event that I've had here so far, we had an um, exotic paint and sip. So we had a male muse. So that was very interesting. And the ladies, we had drinks and such a great time. Then we had a uh, chicken, champagne, and cupcake wine pairing. That was very classy, it was well done. We had a wine connoisseur kind of explain everything to us um, regarding the pairing and things of that nature. I have another paint and sip coming up. We have a mixology lesson here. The purpose of this place when we use our venue or rent the venue space out is to be creative. Whatever creative idea that we can come up with that I don't think has been done already within our community, or even if it has been done, just bringing it here in a classy way um, and giving people something different to do. And that's like my main goal with every event that I have here. Like people go, hmm, you're having that at an art gallery? Yes, we are. It's creative. It's a form of art. <laughs> like, like a, like a kid in a candy store. And that's, that's that very feeling that I knew that I was in the right like um, lane and I was doing what I was supposed to do because I love to help others. I love to see others grow. And I have had several artists come to me and go, this is my first time even hanging something on the wall. So I don't really know what I'm supposed to do here. And they're like, do I do this? And is this okay? But they don't know their own talent, just like I once didn't. But it makes me feel amazing, especially when uh, their grandparents, like you said, come in, they bring their mom and dad. So for my grand opening, just to see the artist standing by their work with their family, or people walking in saying, I'm here for this artist or this or that, that's, that's my purpose. That is my purpose to get these artists the exposure that they need, however I can do so. So it, it just makes me feel amazing to see their growth and know that I can be a part of encouraging them to keep going and not giving up. Next up, I'm gonna meet up with Nacho Daddy's Hot Sauce. Now, if you love hot sauce like me, you're gonna wanna hear this story. Let's go see what Nacho Daddy's Hot Sauce is all about. It's pretty wild, really. I do frequently have people tell me, hey, when are you guys gonna restock that online store because I'm trying to put together my package of Akron goods and, and to know that we're contributing to that for people and they ship it off to their family or they, they send mm -hmm. it to someone who used to be, um, who used to live here and they wanna remind them of home. Like that's, it, it's, it makes you feel like part of the fabric, part of the community, like you're, your hands are adding to the character of this place. Not your daddy's Mexican hot sauce. That was actually my wife show that, you know, one day we were at with friends down when we were still in Louisville and just kind of fantasizing about naming this hot sauce. She just, you know, well, it's, it's, not, you know, not your daddy's recipe because it's your, your daddy's, right? And so I'm like, oh, that's funny. And it was just kind of a play in words and people thought it was good. And so we're like, yeah, let's slap it on it. Uh, and, and it caught on. <laughs> so, because it's not your daddy's recipe because it is my daddy's recipe. I have 
have been into the scotch bonnet that we use for our bold bonnet sauce. Uh, it was a, a, a special flavor, a special blend that we created and I was not one to dive into the scotch bonnet sauces. It just seemed like maybe a trend or whatnot. Uh, and then that one time that we made it, we just selected that pepper. And ever since then, it kind of has been my more favorite hot sauce. I still only get our hot sauce, the scotch bonnet. Uh, and, and for other ones, I've, I've also always loved habaneros. Uh, in Mexico, uh, depending on some of the restaurants, some of the cuisines, maybe a little more central, southern um, Mexico, they do pickled habaneros with uh, red onions. And so I always love that, you know, play on, on, on that citrusy flavor, not so much the smokier flavors or the grassy flavors like a jalapeno. I kind of like the bright fruitiness of the habanero or the scotch bonnet or, you know, this, it, it's gonna sound very crazy, but this summer, I grew my own Carolina Reapers and my own Trinidad Scorpion. And the Carolina Reapers are just amazing. I mean, I am on fire every single time, but I literally just eat them like on a little piece of sandwich. It's, it's insane. I'm, I'm a little bit insane when it comes to that. But yeah, those, both of those are also just very fruity, very bright. Uh, and I just kind of dig that in, in my food. <laughs> When you're able to know the people that made the gift, it's such a better giving experience because you have a story to go along with it. You might say, oh yeah, have you ever met the hot sauce lady? You know, everybody calls Christina hot sauce lady. So, you know, have you ever met the hot sauce lady? Did she made this, they make it right here in Akron and, and it's personal. And, and then of course the benefits of, you know, if. If the hot sauce is bringing in money to this community, then we're gonna go over to Sweet Mary's and spend the money there, you know? And, and it just, it's, it's a gift that keeps on giving when you're, when you're giving gifts that come from the people that you know, somebody just down the street. It, it really makes it different. And I think a lot of people like to have those meaningful gifts. And what's more meaningful than knowing exactly where something came from, knowing the people that used their hands to make it, knowing the story that comes behind why they got into the business that they're in. Well, I think one of the things that I wanted to share too was just kind of how thankful we've been to our small business partners here in Akron. I mean, it's it's something that you do have the support from, you know, some for some other businesses, you have usually city or like the, the small lending organizations. For us, our lifeline has really been uh, our, you know, our friends that are small business owners or they're managed small businesses like this space, the trailhead event space. You know, again, Kaylee Foster has come you know through for us in so many ways, but we're able to borrow spaces like this. We don't have a space of our own yet. Uh, you know, we are at Sweet Mary's Bakery making hot sauce there as well and we're able to make it free of cost of, to us. And, you know, so, uh, you know, we, we are able to keep some of those costs sort of down for right now, just because they really have almost like subsidized some of our um, hot sauce making. And I just think we're very thankful to, again, both Mary Hospodarski and Kaylee for helping us out, as well as Noms for, you know, making sure that we still had a spot over at the Northside Marketplace when we had to close up our actual uh, retail space. Again, leave, uh, home and bloom matthew moore has also been a great partner along alongside and of course uh akron honey companies you know wesley he's he's been amazing in terms of also providing some key tips here and there in, in what to do or bringing us along for for the ride with with his market days uh it i don't you know it, you you see stories like that you hear about it we really have experienced it the the amount of helpfulness of the community but specifically these people right that selflessly i just want one to help us selflessly they just want to see us succeed and I, I get the goosebumps seriously because it was just so nice and we, we try to do the same for them as much as we can uh, but those people particularly just have always put themselves out there making sure that we have a way to continue and continue succeeding and that's just something that is you know priceless as, as corny as it sounds but it is <laughs> I, I come from blue collar roots and you do things yourself. 
you fix your car, you change your oil, you do it all yourself. You don't ask somebody else for help. And but if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you can't rap, you can't act that way because there's way too many other people out there who know more than you do and want to help you. And you got to take it. And if you don't, you're going to regret it. And if you're looking for a unique gift or something that's just different, this is the place you're going to want to check out. Let's go see what the Notique Boutique up here in North Hill is all about. Well, I've always had these two things. I My work was always social work related. And then in my personal life, I have always enjoyed making things. Um, and those were kind of two parallel paths until recently that I found a way that I could unite them. So I can work here, I can run the store, and I can help other entrepreneurs develop their business, and I can promote economic and social justice by supporting local entrepreneurs here in the shop while also making my own products and selling them in the shop. I call them Nomis. Um, they're little heirloom style rag dolls that um, are uh, characters called Nomis. Um, there are also some friends they have that are mushroom people uh, that I call Shroomies and some cloud cloud people as well. I mostly make Nomis. So they're little, uh, little dolls with gnome shaped heads. One thing that I have learned in life that I really try to bring into my work here is that in order for women to be able to fully participate in civil society and in the economy is that they need to have ways to do it that are flexible and that accommodate the fact that they have children. And so what I try to create here is an environment where everyone, the makers are comfortable to bring their children in with them. Their children can come to meetings. I give, I give all their children some of my little dolls and play with them. You know, me and the other entrepreneurs here, our kids know each other and play together, and we're all very understanding of, of the importance of our children and having them participate in the community and have us do what we love to do and also be able to pay attention to our children. So in everything we do here, we try to make it as child-friendly as possible and be accommodating to, to mothers so that women can participate. We're building another generation of entrepreneurs because we let our kids be here and we let our kids explore. We're building another generation of artists and chefs. My son is fascinated with the hideaway kitchen and their Caribbean food. And he'll go into the kitchen and see how they do it. He wants to come every Friday and eat their food. You know, we, the, the children of the Ethiopian chef are delightful. She's got three little ones. I love when she brings them in on Saturday and I'll play with them and I'll ask them to help me in the shop and they learn something and I knit them a little blanket. They think it's, the, they think it's magic that I can crochet, you know? So maybe they'll be the next great crochet seller. Who knows? I like having the kids around and they all learn from each other. The products here, this goes to local people who are making things. And local products are better for the economy in multiple ways. You know, the money is going back to other local people who then spend it on other local people. And so you're, you're, um, you're supporting local people rather than large corporations. A lot of the vendors here are using recycled products, which is good for the planet. And you're also reducing shipping because the ship, global shipping is, is a large contributor to global warming. And then also, most of our a large proportion of our makers are uh, people of color and women and so you're promoting their economic development rather than a corporation that are usually owned by the people who have more power in our society we've got a variety of vendors we've got vendors who have been doing this a while that they are they can scale up their production and make a lot of the same product. And then we've got a lot of vendors who are brand new. I just found on Instagram where like local people making cool stuff. And I said, I, there's a market for that product. I think you should sell it here. And so they don't produce a whole lot of that product. You know, this is their incubator space. 
So, you know, you're getting something really unique. Just, just try it. Just make a few for fun. What's the worst that can happen? You enjoyed yourself, you didn't make money, whatever. You know, and then try to sell it. Uh, sell it to some folks that you know locally and then just see where it goes. And you might end up making things that you didn't think you'd be making. I started out making dresses for my daughter and now I make dolls. In Temple Square, like the just the business owners in general, like we're all kind of becoming friends here. I walk next door. Um, my children are half Nepali, um, so I walk next door to the Nepali market and and talk to those folks there and my kids, you know, go in there, namaste, and they're so excited. And, and I, I get my lunch over there sometimes on days when we don't have food. I love their mango lassi and, and, you know, some of my vendors I've taken over to Arsenic and Old Lace because they have some products that would be compatible with their market. So we take them over there and um, we collaborate a lot with the Coconuts Boutique next door. Uh, you know, and we've got things from all over the world. Thank you once again for watching this episode of Around Akron with Blue Green. Now, if you have any questions, comments, you just want to drop me an email, you can reach me at www.aroundakronwithbluegreen.com or you can catch me on social media. Thank you and have an amazing day.